Welcome to this live edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. And I'm Leanne McAdoo. We have a lot of, we got reporters on site as Donald Trump is here in Austin for uh, a, an event uh, where he's speaking. We have reporters on the street who have been talking to protesters and supporters <laughs> on the street. We have a lot of uh, interesting video clips we're going to play for you. We're also going to go over a lot of breaking news with the Clinton Foundation. And of course, they're there's a lot more news that is coming out about the Clinton Foundation, about her emails on a daily basis. The problem is fatigue and the idea that she keeps putting out there uh, that this is nothing new. We've seen this all before. We also have an interview that we uh, cut earlier today with Roger Stone talking about the uh, documents that have now disappeared out of the National Archives regarding Vince Foster. Again, something that would embarrass Hillary Clinton just disappears. We've seen this before. We saw it before with Sandy Berger the uh, director of national security for, uh, for Bill Clinton. I believe that was his official title. But he went into the National Archives after uh, the Clinton administration was out, after there were issues uh, raised about what they knew about Osama bin Laden, other people. He went in and removed documents that were there. He did it multiple times. And, of course, it, nothing happened to him uh, for doing that. That's the same pattern that we've seen over and over again. And as Roger Stone points out in the interview, this is a pattern that has been going on for decades with the Clintons. Disappearing documents, disappearing people, and no explanations given for what happens with that. Uh, we're going to talk about the State Department, but before we do, I want to give you a, a taste of what is happening at the Donald Trump rally as we speak. I'm going <laughs> to go to a report by Owen Schrauer. He's talking to some uh, thuggish commies. Yes. They literally brung out the clowns. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to that report. <laughs> Owen Schroyer here with Infowars.com. We're standing outside uh, the Trump rally that's going to go down tonight. He's going to be live on Fox with Sean Hannity. And uh, we've got some, uh, it looks like some communists gathered behind me. We're going to see what they're here doing. You guys are against Trump. You mind uh, telling us why? Uh, this guy doesn't. Why can't you talk to him? Uh, you don't like his right to free speech? He's Trump. You say. Uh, <laughs> that's why they don't want to talk to us, because that's all they can say. Up, see, see? Every oh, single one I of them, see. every see. single one of them has used that. Why are you trying to fight me, bro? Hey, hey, what are you saying? What are you guys chanting? What does that mean? Anti-capitalist. You're anti-capitalism. So why don't you go to a communist country? You have Nike. Oh, we're on. trying to make this you one a communist Nike country. On. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, do you know about Venezuela? Never heard of it. Never heard of Venezuela. Venezuela is a communist country that is collapsing. They're eating their pets. They're so hungry. What do you think about that? Fucking idiot. You wake up <laughs> communism and they punch you in the face. What do you think about Venezuela? Like it did Alex Jones last fucking year. Alex what do you think Jones about Venezuela? Alex Jones, what happened last year? What do you think? Let me ask you a question. What do you think about Venezuela? I think you're a f boy and you don't know what communism means. How do y'all say stop the hate? Alex Jones. What do you. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. We've got. Uh, they want Alex Jones out of Austin. They want InfoWars out of Austin. These people hate free speech. They're obviously communists. So I don't know why they just don't go to Venezuela, a communist haven. Hey, you guys know North Korea is communist too. Why don't you go to North Korea? You. We hate free speech, so we're out here protesting. Well, you don't want Alex Jones' right to free speech. I don't even know who the f Alex Jones is. You were just chanting Alex Jones out of Austin. Yeah, I know what I was saying. I'm not stupid. So you say things you know nothing about? Yeah. That's so like communism? Well, I'm Russian. I know plenty about that. So you should know why communism is bad. Yeah, I do know why communism is bad. So why are you out here protesting capitalism? Why are you out here interrogating me? Well, I'm just trying to figure out why people are why people are protesting. You're interrogating a 15-year-old. All right, she's out here protesting, so why can't I ask her questions? Another unintelligent protester. Let's move this way. I'm not sure what language they're speaking. Are you out here? Are you out here protesting Trump? Yeah. Why do you, do you like Trump? Because he is 
racist, misogynistic. He hates immigrants, and yet he has an immigrant as a wife. So you just realize your own fallacy right there. What do you mean? He hates immigrants, but he's married to one. Exactly. So why is he anti -immigrant? Exactly. He's not. That's that's not. Yeah, he is. No, he's not. All Mexicans rapists. Wrong. No, he has. Wrong. Someone have a. Someone have. Someone pull it up. I don't know. No, it's on the fucking news. Wait, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. I'll just clarify what he said. I'll just clarify what he said. He said illegal immigrants are coming here from Mexico and raping us. That's a fact. That's not a fact. So no illegal immigrants from Mexico have ever raped anyone in America. There's people from all over the world that do that. Oh, so because rape exists, just let it go. It's fine. We shouldn't try to eliminate it. There's people to stand up against that. Right, and I'm doing that by trying to make immigration legal. Standing for Trump? No, by standing for immigration laws. Oh, excuse me, sir. I do stand for Trump. No, but now you're just making that up. You know that Donald Trump has put more women in power than any other major corporation in the world? You hear this. That's beautiful. This is what they do when you provide them with facts. They back off with, oh, my. My God, it's like a knockout blow when you hit him with a fact. This is beautiful. I'm, I'm it is beautiful. You have no idea. I do have an idea. You, I just disproved you on racism. I disproved you on anti-immigration. I disproved you on misogyny. Homophobia. You know that Donald Trump was the first person to get uh, gays and blacks and Mexicans into golf clubs? Yeah, he fought for minorities' rights at golf clubs while no one else would. What do you think about that? The first person. I want to see documentation on that. It's out there, my friend. Here we go. All right. Well, let's move on to another guy. Thank you. You've been great. I hope you can sleep at night. But what's that? I said, I'm glad this pays your bills. I hope you can sleep at night. Well, as long as Trump becomes president, we save capitalism. I think I will be able to. Racist, Racist go home. Racist go home. Racist go home. Senior citizens look at him as a trap. Racist go home. Dirty Racist go home. Racist go home. Back to this live edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. Leanne, we just looked at that uh, live <laughs> report from Owen Schroyer about uh, the communists out there, the group think, and I'm using the yes. term think in uh, lightly here. <laughs> and the fact that they had, they were ashamed to show their faces. Like another uh, thing, once why, again, had gags over their faces, yeah. which, uh, you know, th that's free speech for you in a communist country. But of course, they pretended they didn't even know about <laughs> Venezuela. Right. Okay. And every day we're. That getting way they don't have to get into the debate with you because they don't even know about it. Yeah. And communism is great. There's new information about Venezuela where they're breaking into zoos and eating horses or whatever. Okay. This, this uh, article right here Venezuela bans lines outside of bakeries because they say it creates anxiety <laughs> to see people in lines. Isn't that interesting? Right. And so this is from the National Superintendency of Fair Prices. Uh, oh, we're getting, wow. <laughs> we're getting pretty close to having silly organizations like that here in the U.S. But they said that they're going to fine bakeries if they got people standing in line, okay? They looked at 1,900 bakeries across the country. They found out the shortages of food and medicine have reached 80%. And then here's the killer, all right? They talked to the president <laughs> of the National Federation of Flour. <laughs> and he says... There is not enough raw material to produce bread. The government must understand bakeries are not wheat processing plants. The problem is production of wheat. Okay, so <laughs> if they don't have the flour, they can't make the bread. He's trying to explain this to the government. But, of course, you know, just like Pharaoh, they're saying make the bricks without straw. Okay, or... Like here in the United States, we have the EPA or the National Department of Transportation comes out with these corporate average fuel economy mandates, or as Eric Peters calls them, fatwas from uncle, dictating that uh, you're going to get this amount of fuel economy. They don't have any engineers, just like they don't have anybody that makes any flour, but they're going to mandate prosperity by just putting it right. out there. And, and then if you don't do it, if you don't have the wheat <laughs> because you don't have flour, they will fine you if people line up in front of your store. That's wow. communism for you. Well, right. And that's what they want. To, <laughs> they want even more of this government control of the means of production because they yeah. clearly they do such a great job of it. Yeah. And of course, you know, I don't know if anyone could tell from that video because the commies had their faces all covered. But that was one of the skinny guys that we confronted and that was actually uh, speaking with your with your wife last year. You know, the. Yeah. The fame they famously kill their kids. Well, that was the one the one guy there that was like, well, ask Alex Jones what we did to him last year. Guys, can we queue up the video of them punching Alex? <laughs> so that you yeah. 
You, you got the footage? So it exists? No, it doesn't. Okay, they don't have that yet. <laughs> no, exactly. Because it like, didn't happen. <laughs> they were at the abortion uh, play, the Pine Parenthood, okay, saying that they kill. There we go. There's the footage right there. Okay, he beat up Alex Jones right he there. He was running in slow motion <laughs> and jumped over a garbage can. Yeah. He, oh, look, there it is. <laughs> and they run away. Grab the microphone and run. Yeah, that's that's what they call beating up. You know, that's they can't really be honest with people. And there they are. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're in front of Planned Parenthood talking about bragging about the fact that they kill their kids. Okay? Yeah, they kill but their kids. But they want to kill your kids. They will kill them as they do in Venezuela with food shortages or they'll kill them with violence. You know, they'll confiscate the guns. They'll kill the police for their guns if they can't bribe the police to uh, sell their guns uh, via corruption after they've spent $53 <laughs> million to set up centers to confiscate the weapons. I want to go to our reporter, Joe Biggs, now, who's on site at the uh, Trump rally. Uh, he's there uh, looking at the crowds. Or, uh, looks like they're queued up there, Joe. Yeah, there's a lot of people out here, David. We've actually seen thousands of people. Now, if we pan across and look, look at the amount of cars that are out here right now. Wow. If you took every person that is here in Austin, Texas right now to attend this Trump rally, you wouldn't be able to fill every single Hillary Clinton event that's happened this year so far. Right. I mean. <laughs> There are thousands upon thousands of people, and we've had people from uh, Hispanics for Trump, Asians for Trump, all these different uh, people, types of people from all over, from Colombia, from all over. Yeah. Who people they try to say don't Hillary exist. Clinton. People mm -hmm. who want to see Donald Trump, people who want to see secure borders, people who want to see freedom. And look at this. It's just completely, I mean, just tons and tons of people. We've been here since around 1.32 o'clock, and I've seen so many people come through. It's actually so loud inside this uh, exposition center that you can kind of start hearing it through the walls right now, the guys who are opening up for Donald. I mean, it is loud. But this is the largest event that I've been to so far, and I've been to a lot of Trump events. It's surprising to see this many people that are pro-Trump in a town that's as liberal as Austin. Yeah. Right. And, of course, over the weekend, we had Hillary Clinton going all over Martha's Vineyard in the Northeast, uh, taking a jet uh, flight for 20 miles as she's going from one fundraiser to the other. We're looking at a massive grassroots movement here behind you, Joe. But at the same time, Hillary is, is speaking to a couple of thousand people all over the Northeast in multiple secret events where, like uh, one of them that she had with the Rothschilds, it was $100,000 per person to get in. And yet we see with this massive grassroots movement that you got behind you, Donald Trump got contributions from 400,000 people that averaged $55 a piece. Okay, that's what we're seeing. That's the difference between these two. Yet we're being told all the time by the professional pollsters that uh, she is uh, killing him in the polls. That's the way they read the polls. I had, I had one of our guys that works over in the warehouse bring me two giant boxes full of Hillary for Prison bumper stickers. I think you're going to see a lot more Hillary for Prison stickers around Austin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody. I mean, we had people <laughs> swarming. I've got a video up right now where we, uh, it's uploading right now, where we handed out over a thousand of these stickers. People were coming over like I was giving away, you know, free money, <laughs> you know. It's surprising to see so many people finally awake to the corruption, the evil that Hillary Clinton is, and they're inside chanting right now. Inside, I mean, it's so loud. This is probably one of the largest events so far. Has the event already started inside? It started at yeah, 7 o'clock? They, they've already got an opening act inside right now. You can hear so them getting the crowd the, going. So the people that are out there, they're, this is an overflow crowd. Are they going to be able to hear the event uh, from outside? Or are they well, just no, they're, they're, they're still letting people in. This oh, is a large are. venue. They're, mm -hmm. they're, yeah, they're still letting people in. Are, are I mean, there any anti-Trump protesters out there or mostly just uh, people in support? Leanne, we are in good old boy Texas right now. There's <laughs> not going to be too many people coming out here. All the anti-Trump protesters have played a pretty smart move and stayed downtown in the more liberal area because they know that if they came out here and acted a fool, it'd be all out war. You know, right. these guys out there dressed up like clowns or running around with dildos, you know, <laughs> in downtown Austin. Meanwhile, you have good, hardworking Americans who want to make America great again that are here waiting in line. They've been out here all day waiting to see Donald Trump speak. It's actually, I, I, it's kind of blown my mind to see this many people show up to this event. I did yeah. not think that Trump would have this large of a crowd, this large of a following. Well, it looks, like a, an, it looks like an incredibly diverse crowd as well. If you look out oh, there, I mean, oh, you see you everybody. Surprised. You would be Race, so creed. surprised. And, and one thing too, we should point out for people who uh, are, are not in the area, 
Uh, it's not raining out there, but boy, is it hot. And uh, <laughs> you're going to be just as wet standing out there in that heat as if it was raining. And people are standing in that heat. They've been there all to, day. Uh, get into that rally. Yeah, I've been there for a long time. It's actually not even been that bad out here, though. The, there's been a nice, oh, yeah. cool breeze, and a lot of people have been very uh, uh, welcome to conversation. You know, everybody is chanting Hillary for prison. We've got a video that's up already where there's this uh, Latina for Trump, and she's talking about how she loves Donald Trump. Uh, she was from Colombia, and then she uh, starts speaking Spanish, and then we have people behind us chanting, lock her up. I mean, that's all we've seen, and you can hear it happening inside right now. You know, it, it's... Lock up Hillary, finally, not the uh, lady from Columbia. It, yeah, it's finally being up. exposed. I mean, if you look at what happened with WikiLeaks today, the fact that she has been denying that there's any kind of cause for concern, and it's also coming out in the mainstream media that it's now a conspiracy theory to question these facts that we've seen. We've seen the videos of her, you know, twitching. Yeah. There's something wrong with it. That's not a normal action, and it's not a conspiracy uh, theory to go and be concerned about that because you are about to take on one of the you know the largest position we have here in america and, and if you're not stressful. in good health you cannot you cannot hold office right you're well, you know, a liar quit being you're a sexist a joe biggs one of the things yeah, that we're going to talk I'm about hillary, hillary has already put the rumors to rest she can open up a jar of pickles that's already been opened <laughs> you know uh, it, it's funny glamour <laughs> magazine came out last week with an article saying yes it is sexist to question Hillary Clinton's health. You know, that, that, that's, the, that's the road that the mainstream media has decided to take on this entire situation. You know, uh, today in WikiLeaks, it came out and said that she had been searching, uh, you know, stuff or asking people in emails, you know, about Parkinson's. Uh, that she even mentioned to one of the uh, NFL guys that she had a cracked head. So this is coming out. She's been worried about it. Huma Aberdeen's been concerned about it. A lot of people within her uh, campaign are concerned about her health, but she gets still gets up on stage. She still lies, and people are seeing through it. People are sick and tired of it. They want someone who's going to be strong. She can't even stand up for longer than 15 minutes. Her rallies hardly go, I mean, for a very long period of time, except for the DNC, when she probably got enough of those shots in her arm by her, her handler to keep her up and buzz for a little bit to give a speech, and then she has a little convulsion again. But she yeah. can't get out. She doesn't have what it takes. You know, Trump well, gets out here day in and day out, travels around the country nonstop, hardly sleeping. He went to Louisiana. Meanwhile, you know, you've got Obama who can't even go out there and visit, except for today, finally, you know, weeks after this has all been taking place. He's too busy playing golf. We want someone who's going to come in, clean up America, secure the borders and get things done. I want someone who's not going to be a, a criminal. Mm -hmm. I want someone who's going to be honest and, quite frankly, I think a lot of the reasons why she's not doing press conferences uh, are because she just doesn't want to take the questioning. We saw questions right. today uh, with the State Department asking them where the $400 million uh, to Iran went. Uh, who did you turn this over to in Iran? Well, I can't really say. I don't really yeah, know. we don't know. We don't know who we sent it to. We don't know who got the money, all this other kind of stuff. This is the kind of corruption that we're seeing. And, of course, there's a lot of news that uh, came out today about the Clinton Foundation, Joe. And one of the things that I'm concerned about is this cancer of corruption that has been the Clintons, both Bill and Hillary now, for decades. And we've seen it nationally for uh, 23 years that this has been going on. That's what concerns me the most, even more than the uh, health of Hillary, is the health of our government here in the right. sense that it is an endemic corruption that we've had. And uh, this corruption just gets worse all the time as they get away with the, each successive lie, with each successive scandal, they get worse the next time. And it lowers the bar for everybody else, not just Clinton, but it's bringing down everyone. The fish rots from the head down. And that's what we're seeing in this country. This is She represents a cancer of corruption on this society that is far worse than any personal health issues that she has. Right. Well, the question is, is how is she going to be able to stand up against Trump in a one-on-one -on -one debate? You know, figuratively and, you know, actually physically, how can she stand up and actually debate this man? Because we have so much information on her corruption, her failing health, everything. What does she have on Trump? What is she going to say? Oh, he wants to build a wall. He wants to keep illegals out. Like what? the American people are not going to see that and go, well, that's bad. The, the bulk of Americans are want. They want secure borders, and they want to see him stand up. He will dominate her. I don't know how she will have a chance in hell of beating him in a debate. But you don't understand. Uh, she's a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. She, I mean, that's, she's already won de facto. Yeah, that's her Kufare card. I mean, he was <laughs> like, I am a woman. 
uh, don't say anything against me because then that makes you instantly a misogynist. Check your privilege. A racist or whatever, right. But there is nobody more privileged than Hillary Clinton. That's what we so need to privileged. understand. It isn't the white privilege or the this privilege. It's the political privilege, the entitlement that comes with being Hillary Clinton, where you can do whatever you wish. And just as we covered last Friday, we had a, a guy, six photos of the inside of a uh, submarine that would have been classified if they had been classified as confidential. He's going to go to jail for a year. He's going to lose his right to have guns. Hillary Clinton is nearly, uh, uh, is very close to being sent to the White House for four years, not the big house. And she's going to ban your guns, not lose her right to uh, exercise self-defense. Well, she doesn't need to. She's got an army protecting her. Let's not forget that also it's been revealed today that Huma Abedin left some classified materials that she they were in the burn bag. So mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, you know, they burned all these files. She said, oh, I'm going to be bringing a VIP in the car. I left all this, this the burn bag there. Can you put it in the trunk? Yeah. So she leaves yeah. it right out in her car. Didn't lock the door. It doesn't even <laughs> lock the door, but she's it totally sounds fine. Like, it sounds like there's a revival going on the on the inside. I mean, it is energetic <laughs> and so loud, like the walls are vibrating. Yeah. This is one of the most hyped Trump rallies. I mean, and I can kind of see inside the door. I mean, there's a, a large, large amount of people. I mean, it is... Those people are pumped up. Yeah, I see ready. there's a Pastor Mark Burns, a host of The Colors That Unite, is up yeah, there right he, now. He and just, you can. Yeah, he, he was just in there making a statement. He's like, why does everyone keep coming out saying he's racist? He has people of all colors, all religions uh, working for him. No one's ever come out and said that he's been uh, discriminatory against them. Uh, you know, women have advanced in his uh, company. And, you know, it, it's completely ridiculous. And then you have Hillary Clinton's VP and Tim Kaine coming out and saying that America is far behind Muslim countries in equality for women. Right. And this is out of control. Well, even even Van Jones has come out. There was a video of Van Jones who was saying, you know, look, Look, the Democrats, they need 90 to 92 percent, more than 90 percent of the black vote. They need more than 90 percent of the black vote to win. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a crowd of 20 something black people and three of them are for Trump, they've yeah. already lost. Yeah. And that's why the Democrats are so afraid. That's why they have to racially divide this country, get people fighting amongst each other, because they know that they will not win if they don't secure 90 to 92 percent of the black vote and that's a lot and a lot of black people black voters are saying what have they done for us yeah yeah that's a and, good point and, and that's a what lot, he pointed out a lot of those a lot of those voters were in uh, louisiana as well they didn't see trump come out there and sit on a stool and wave and do a, a photo op and sign autographs no he got out there picked up boxes handed stuff out handed out food and people were sitting there screaming chanting thank you we knew you would come we could depend on you you're the only person we have you know that was very presidential mm -hmm. to see that kind of thing happen and you're not seeing that from hillary clinton what she do she called in why because she needs to take so many days so many breaks because she is decrepit she's haggard she's she had to do, go do a she's fundraiser evil. with Cher, and now justin timberlake um you know, you know, because Leonardo DiCaprio had to bail because he was tied up in more Clinton Foundation scandals. So, you know, they had to tie the fundraiser over to Justin Timberlake. So, Joe, you mentioned uh, what happened in uh, Louisiana. And, of course, uh, a lot of people in uh, uh, conservative uh, talk are talking about the fact that Hillary Clinton hasn't done anything with her Clinton Foundation in Louisiana. That'd be a perfect opportunity for her to essentially ingratiate herself to uh, voters. But uh, <laughs> as my son said, yeah, don't pay for votes more than once. <laughs> okay, yeah. She probably already got that I sewed mean, up did, with the what election. Did she do with the, what, what did the Clinton Foundation do for the people of Haiti? Right. That's right. And I talked, and we got a report. I talked to Gary Haven about that yesterday. And he talks about eyewitness reports about what he saw, people that he talked to in Haiti, how the Clinton Foundation was totally AWOL there. And, of course, they're totally AWOL in Louisiana. What do they spend their money on? They spend their money on things like climate change, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what the Clinton Foundation is about. They're not about helping flood victims or victims of any other natural disaster. They're not about helping people. And, of course, they were delisted uh, by one of the Charity Watch organizations back in December once they came back with their amended tax returns. We've got a lot of information about the Clinton Foundation. We're going to go to that after we uh, take a quick break. We've also got Jakari Jackson and uh, Darren McBrain are going to be joining us from the other studio. And we have other reporters that are going to be out on the field. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, check back in with us. Let us know what's going on there at that rally here in Austin, Texas. Donald Trump is speaking. And we're going to come back to that rally in just a few moments with our other reporters as well. Uh, let's take a quick break right now and we'll be right back.
Okay, so let's. We're going to wait just one moment. This is live. <laughs> so. Well, you know, and I wanted to kind of chime in there with the the president's visit to Louisiana today. Now, um, earlier, I guess it was probably over the weekend, he tweeted out. Um, I'm sorry, sent out some memo, basically reminding the people of Louisiana, the first responders, and everything, don't be racist. Mm -hmm. If you know everybody needs help, so you know if you see, and it's like, are you kidding me? Have you seen the videos of the people of all different colors, class, whatever, just getting out there helping each other? That's right. That's right. And I've heard people make the case that. They learned their lesson from Katrina. The federal government, FEMA, is not there for you. Okay, we've pointed this out for a long time. FEMA is a lie. FEMA is about getting control of you, not about assisting you. And that's been the case with the government from pretty much every level, but especially at the federal level. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about the new revelations about the Clinton Foundation, new revelations about emails. You thought you had heard enough about emails? <laughs> you know, we had Bernie Sanders say oh, he's news. tired of hearing about those damn emails. Well. You know, they just keep coming, and we've had another big batch of emails that have come out. Very different, but telling the same story of corruption, going into more detail, more proof of criminal corruption from Hillary Clinton. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show and the Nightly News. This is a live edition. I'm David Knight here with... Leanne. Leanne McAdoo, and we've got uh, Jakari Jackson and Darren McBreen are going to be joining us in the other studio in just a moment. Before we go to them, the reason we're live tonight is because there is a Trump rally here in Austin. We just talked to Joe Biggs outside the rally. Uh, they already have, uh, Donald Trump has not uh, begun speaking yet. They still have people filing in. Their people have been lined up all day. Another massive rally here in Austin, and we have our reporters are going to be calling in live to report what's going on there. And as we were talking to Joe Leanne, we're talking about the issues about Hillary Clinton's health. As I said before, I, I think Hillary Clinton herself is a disease. Mm -hmm. She's a disease on the body politic. She is the very embodiment of corruption, mm -hmm. of privilege, of entitlement. That is the problem with Hillary Clinton. And here's CBS News saying this today. They're talking about the appearance last night where she goes on Jimmy Kimmel and she makes light of the health issues. And as Alex Jones uh, did earlier on the radio show, Today, he showed how they faked uh, opening a pickle jar, you know, and she had uh, Jimmy Kimmel take her pulse. But here's the reality. CBS points out that uh, she's trying to make light of the email controversy, light of the controversies about her health. They say, however, Hillary Clinton faces new pressure on two fronts. Her ties to the Clinton Foundation, or I would say her lies from the Clinton Foundation, yeah. and the emails from her private server computers while she was Secretary of State. Now, you would think that this is old news. And, of course, Hillary Clinton loves to say, that's been covered. That's oh, old news. news. The tactic that Hillary Clinton has used for decades, and, again, we have a report coming up uh, with Roger Stone where he talks about how they've covered up scandals 23 years ago, the beginning of the Bill Clinton administration. This is an MO they've been using for decades, rolling this out mm -hmm. gradually, delaying things, trickling it out a little bit at a time, and then as new and even more damaging revelations come out, there's a fatigue that sets in. People think they've already heard this. They right. turn it off, or they say, like Bernie Sanders, I'm tired about hearing about those damn, damn emails. emails right? okay? or, or, or they're setting people up to think that the Russians are going to be putting out false information. That's what yeah. the DNC is prepping everyone That's for. That's right. Yeah, the red baiting, the, yeah. <laughs> the Hillary Un-American Activities uh, Committee. But here's what CBS says. They go on to say the State Department is now under orders to review and release thousands of messages retrieved during FBI investigation. They are not, I repeat, they are not part of the roughly 30,000 documents that were turned over two years ago. Clinton aides said they don't know what's in these 15,000 emails that have just come out or how their lawyers possibly missed them when they said and lied and, and lied. <laughs> say that they would turn over all of her work-related emails, okay? And, of course, we had just uh, the end of last week, she's trying to throw uh, Colin Powell under the bus, saying it was all his idea yeah, to yeah. have a private server. And he goes, you're not doing that to me, okay? Yeah, no, and that's he, he actually said that statement. He's like, I'm free. I'm yeah. free. I, <laughs> I'm going to say the truth. He's, it he's, wasn't part of that, he's part of that globalist <laughs> cabal, but he isn't going to have her throw him she under the own, bus. She for doesn't this own stuff. me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, but what does Clinton say? Okay. Hillary goes on Jimmy Kimmel Live, and after she does or before she does the uh, pickle jar, she says, We've already released, I don't know, 30,000 plus. So what's, what's a, a few, few more? more? Yeah. Uh, what's a few more? And what then difference he comes does back. it make? Yeah. They've got their little dialogue going. He says, Well, have you actually considered using FaceTime instead of email? She says, well, Actually, actually, I think that's really good advice. You know what? 
if you want FaceTime with Hillary Clinton, we're learning from some of these emails that have come out. And there's also a separate uh, group of emails that have been acquired by Judicial Watch. And those are shedding light on the Clinton Foundation. And right. what they found out was, if you really want FaceTime with Hillary Clinton, you've got to pay the Clinton Foundation. And right. then you get real face-to-face -face time. More than half pay. of the people who ha got FaceTime with Hillary. Made right. donations to her foundation, and then she says, sure, we'll open up some more armed shipments to yes. your country. And they may dismiss this, uh, Leanne, as conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. This when is Donald the new buzzword that's around. Of course, we yeah. know it was weaponized by the CIA decades ago for this exact purpose. But now even her spokesman's coming out at every turn saying conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, yes. conspiracy theory. Yes. Don't, don't pay And MSNBC's hit piece now uh, today that came out with Donald Trump and Alex Jones, same thing. So... We already see your game coming from a mile away. Well, I think what's interesting is that they're using some very, very strong language in the Trump campaign. Now, Trump has used strong language in the past, but Rudy Giuliani, who is a former prosecutor and understands this, and he's not going to, there's Hillary. Uh, <laughs> and, and you can see the women over there. Talk about a conspiracy. You see the women over there when she starts doing her head like that. Uh, they're startled as well. It's just as, so as exaggerated. Like, you know, I've, I've done something like that before where you're getting bombarded and you're just like, whoa, okay. But, I mean, yeah. she took it to a very weird, bizarre extreme. Like, I, I truly thought that her robot parts were malfunctioning. Well, what triggered it was the fact that several people started talking to her at once. And I think yeah. that's why she won't do one of these uh, press conferences. Mm -hmm. It's also, she the doesn't want to... lights. Yeah, she doesn't want to uh, face the tough questions either. But as I was saying before, Rudy Giuliani made it very clear and used a very precise term, RICO, okay? And now Donald Trump is saying that as well. It's racketeering and racketeered influence and corrupt organizations. Mm -hmm. That's what the Clinton Foundation is. And of course, Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani are both saying that. And it is very, very clearly in, if you look at these emails, uh, that that is truly what happened, okay? Right. You've got a situation here, and this is uh, the Drudge Report has put up a lot of these articles here today. The National Review pointed out that there's a blockbuster report from the Associated Press uh, where they talk about uh, phone conversations and they went through and they found people that had actually got to meet with Hillary Clinton and the State Department doing FaceTime with her. Let's say, okay, real FaceTime, <laughs> uh, not virtual FaceTime. The people who get in to see her, over half of them had made very large donations to the Clinton Foundation. And they made it very clear when they look at these emails, and we're going to go through some of these but here's one of the important things, and this, again, is the Clinton technique. As National Review pointed out, at the beginning of the report, where AP went through and correlated the people who got in to see her with people who had previously donated massive amounts of money, they point out that they were delayed by three years mm -hmm. from the State Department. They had to go through and file, uh, sue the State Department uh, in federal court to get these records. What did these records show? 85 out of 154 people from private interests who met with her or who had phone conversations scheduled with Hillary Clinton uh, while she was at the State Department had already donated to her family charity or had pledged commitments to its international programs. These 85 don donors contributed $156 million, 40 donated more than $100,000 each, 20 gave more than a million dollars each. Now, these meetings came about, uh, and they said they, they don't appear to violate legal requirements, but they violate ethical requirements and pledges, and not requirements, but ethics, and pledges from Hillary Clinton saying that she was not going to be connected with the Clinton Foundation. And I thought it was very amazing the way they parsed that pledge. You can see that here in the report as they're talking about it. As they said that they're, they're doing important work on climate change as they're selling uh, the Clinton Foundation. And of course, uh, this week, Reuters reported that Bill Clinton, uh, well, Hillary Clinton said that she's no longer going to receive donations from foreign corporations if she yeah. becomes president. If they she already made president. that president, uh, that, that <laughs> promise, you know, while she was in the State Department, that there would be no funny games there with that. So we don't believe them this time around. That's right. And as they're, they're talking about this, they say, well, you know, we really didn't do anything illegal. We just had pledged that we were not going to uh, have a direct contact with them. And, and this is the way they parse this. They say <laughs> in 2008, Clinton and Hillary signed an ethics agreement governing her family's charities in order to become President Obama's Secretary of State. She promised that her family's charities would name all the donors on an annual basis and seek clearance from the State Department before accepting new donations from foreign government money. 
Last year, the charity said they did not comply with the promises. They blamed oversights, okay? Yeah. On Tuesday, the Boston Globe said in an editorial that the foundation should shut itself down. Even if they've done nothing illegal, the foundation will always look too much like a conflict of interest for comfort. Right. Yeah, there's a good reason for that. Because yeah. if you look at the revelations from Judicial Watch, they have printed emails back and forth, two-way conversations with Huma Abedin, uh, with uh, Cheryl Mills and others who are in uh, personal assistance of Hillary Clinton, showing that it is a pay-to-play situation, that the Prince of Bahrain had to go through the foundation to see Clinton. He, he gave $32 million to the Clinton Global Initiative. People who had given money were granted instant access. If they had not given money, then in most cases, you're not going to get a chance to talk to her. So we've got a very clear record here that is emerging with these documents that have been acquired by Judicial Watch, with the uh, information that has been received finally by AP after suing the State Department. After three years, AP is getting that. And then there's the additional 15,000 emails that are out there. Right. So the information just keeps coming in, but it's a steady trickle. That's the way they control public perception. They say there's nothing new here. We've talked about this. We don't need to go over this. Uh, it's old ground again. Well, let's not forget that during the entire time she was at the State Department, she never hired anyone to be the Inspector, Inspector General of the State Department. So there was no one there making sure that she wasn't violating this promise that she made to not conduct any funny business between her foundation and the State Department. I mean, that right there is a red flag, a huge red flag. But you know what? It's also old news because anything that deals with the Clintons, it's just scandal after scandal. So they can constantly go, ah, you know, vast right wing conspiracy. Yeah, absolutely. We've got one of our reporters. Uh, Owen is, I think, at the um, the event right now where Donald Trump is speaking in Austin, Texas. I want to get a live report from Owen. Uh, tell us what you see, Owen. Owen Schroeder here for InfoWars.com. And that's right, David. We're out here at the Travis County Expo mm -hmm. Center where we've seen a lot of long lines trying to get into a Donald Trump event. But this is certainly one of the biggest crowds that okay. we've ever seen. So Info Warriors came over here. A lot of people with Hillary for Christmas shirts on. Tons of Info Warriors out here. You can see all the people. Folks, we're not even oh, people running. They're super we're excited. Yeah. Oh, and we might, to, right Owen, we might have to. Oh, and we might have to come back to you in just a moment. We're get you and let you get a better connection with us on Skype. Yeah, we got right now. We got a very bad connection, and we're going to come back to you in just a couple of minutes. Let's go to our other reporters who are in the other studio. We've got Jakari Jackson and Darren McBreen. Uh, guys, what have you got for us? Okay, oh. we're not there with them yet. Uh, one of the things that came <laughs> out today is we've got, when we're talking about the Clinton Foundation, of course, James Carville uh, went on the Morning Joe show and said, uh, you know, somebody is going to go to hell over these attacks on the Clinton Foundation. <laughs> and he, he said, you know, quite frankly, they're doing so much good. They're helping oh. people. He said, what the Clinton Foundation does, this is James Carville, okay, master of lies, deception, and uh, misdirection, okay? Yeah. He says, what the Clinton Foundation does is it takes money from rich people and it gives it to poor people. You know, because Hillary Clinton and Bill were dead broke. They were destitute they, yeah. from their selfless they're lives of Robin public Hoods, service. They're right. Robin the Hood. <laughs> Or robbing all the neighborhoods. <laughs> he says somebody is going to go to hell over this because somebody, now I'm saying here or somewhere, this is saving people's lives. And as we pointed out, uh, <laughs> Gary Haven talked to us about what he saw in Haiti. They were not doing anything there whatsoever. And if you want to know if this is a valid charity, as uh, James Carville would like for you to believe, understand that quietly, just before Christmas, December 22nd, 2015, this last Christmas, it was quietly delisted by Charity Navigator. Now, this is uh, one of the major sites that looks at whether or not charities are bona fide or not, mm -hmm. whether they're doing a good job, whether they're doing good work. They said Charity Navigator said, this is back on uh, December 22nd, it had removed the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation from its watch list, a red flag used by the Charity Watchdog to signal donors that questions have been raised about the group's operation. This was last December. The move comes a little more than a month after the foundation filed its 2014 Form 990, which amended returns from previous years. They amended returns from 2010 through 2013, four years right there. And they said uh, this information, along with public memorandums submitted addressing the other issues raised on the watch list entry, meets our requirements for removal. In other words, yeah. Charity Navigator doesn't think it's a legitimate charity. You know, right. quite frankly, I don't think it's a legitimate charity when what you're doing is pushing 
climate change. You're yeah. pushing crony capitalism. Uh, yeah, the people the in Haiti, I really doubt they just want a roof over their head. People are still living in tents there. They yeah. don't really care about climate change. And I think it's also really telling the fact that Bill Clinton is actively working to shut down most of the most of the Clinton Foundation. He's laying off people. He's like, be ready for, in about a year. So they already know it's going to be a huge problem. It's kind of frightening to me because the fact that they're starting to shut down the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative just makes me think that they already know something bigger and better is, is coming down the pipeline, a la Hillary Clinton there's just so the White House. many different facets to this corruption. Again, as I pointed out, we've got Judicial Watch, which is uh, looking at various aspects of this. They tried to get her uh, deposed under oath, but of course, she's not going to go there. They mm -hmm. delayed that decision from that judge uh, quite some time. It's actually going to be about the time the convention, the first convention started, the Republican convention. Uh, they delayed that until the end of last week. The judge said, no, we're not going to put her under oath. And she herself pointed out that uh, you get a much, in many cases, a much more severe penalty for lying to the FBI than you do for the crime that they're initially investigating. She is scared to death about that. That's why yeah. the Clintons don't want that transcript where she was talking to the FBI to come out. She understands that because as I pointed out when we were talking to Roger Stone today, the reason Bill Clinton was impeached wasn't because he had affairs. It was because he committed perjury. Hillary Clinton has already committed perjury right. openly to the congressional committee that was asking her about her emails. So she's already committed perjury. She doesn't want it to be found out that she committed perjury with the FBI. She doesn't want to do it in a private lawsuit from Judicial Watch. That is a very dangerous thing for her. But we keep seeing this information coming in multiple sources from Judicial Watch, from emails that have been finally released, from phone logs uh, that have been returned. Okay, now we've finally got some phone logs. This is Fox News. AP was looking at correlating the number of the people who had given money and who were able to see her, showing uh, that in more than half of the cases you had to give money in order to get an audience with Her Majesty. Mm -hmm. We now have phone logs that have come out. This is reported by Fox News. Hillary Clinton's chief of staff, Cheryl Mills, received nearly 150 phone messages from the Clinton Foundation's operations director, Laura Graham, during a two-year span at the State Department, a significantly higher number of calls than from any other individual during that time frame. Mm. Now, that's circumstantial. She's probably trying to get her friend's jobs. Yeah, exactly. Circumstantial. Unlike these back and forth, uh, multiple conversations that we can see recorded in the emails, we do not know the contents of what they talked about in these phone logs. The NSA does. Very, yeah, exactly. As, as the NSA does have that information. They got that metadata. Yeah. And, and this is the way they spend this. Okay, we talked earlier about the ethics agreement. She said, we're not going to have any connection with the Clinton Foundation. Well, here's what the people that were with Hillary Clinton's uh, team point out. They say, Secretary Clinton's ethics agreement at the time did not preclude other State Department officials from engaging with or having contact with the Clinton Foundation. So in other words, it's perfectly fine for her personal assistants like right. Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin to engage in this pay for play stuff. We only promised that yeah. Hillary wouldn't directly talk to them. And I love how she's <laughs> like, well, she did that on her own time after hours because that's what I always do on my own time after hours is do work for my boss's company yeah. to get my boss's friends jobs. Yeah. I mean, no, we're make, not buying it. Make it's sure that crap. money launderer who just paid a $60 million fine to Switzerland gets somebody in Lebanon right now. Yeah. You make it happen right now. Right as now. the head of the uh, Clinton Foundation. Uh -oh. uh, we've got our reporters in the other studio Jakari Jackson and Darren McBreen are uh, ready. Let's uh, go to that studio. Gentlemen. Hey, hey, how are you doing, guys? Yeah, we're just talking about the, all the whole situation going on with Hillary, and we are laughing about this whole pickle jar incident. <laughs> we're saying like that, that it needs to be the new standard uh, of recruitment for the Marines. You, just, you see if a guy can open a jar of pickles and, oh, you, you're fit to run the country now. No, well, first of all, that's very sexist because I actually have to use one of those little weight trainer things. Well, that's the whole I, if you can't open a jar of pickles, why are you in the Marines? I can't I run know. the country. She looked pretty strong, though. She was like, she looked. <laughs> Yeah, I'm convinced out, there's nothing wrong with it. Pythons without, yeah, but we also have some news. We were talking about the media manipulation and how they're propping up Hillary, and not just with pillows and uh, stools and all these other talking <laughs> engagements, but they're actually propping this woman up to the point where, as uh, Leanne was referencing, she's pretty much untouchable. If you bring up any of her scandals, you're just anti-woman, you're anti-Hillary, but if you bring up something about Trump, that's fair game. And, uh, and Darren McGreen, you had more on that. Well, I was going to say one of the more popular trends that we're seeing right now coming out of the mainstream news media is calling Trump the C-word. 
mm -hmm. the conspiracy theories. Yes. You know, he's now a conspiracy. First, he was what, a xenophobic, he's racist, he's a he's, bigot. He's a he's fascist, racist, sexist. All the ISC, all right. And now add conspiracy theories to that as well. And a lot of that has to do with simply asking questions about Hillary's health, you know. And we've had medical experts on this show, we've seen medical experts on other shows and all over the, the media. and basically talking about that she's not acting right. You know, something is wrong with her, uh, aside from politics, right? <laughs> but mentally and physically, there's something wrong with, with Hillary Clinton. And, you know, we've seen her <laughs> coughing fits. Uh, she's fatigued. She yes. can't, you know, she's got to sit down wherever she's she goes. She's passing out. We've seen, I was watching this video from CNN earlier, and they were showing on their own video of, like, Secret Service guys walking her up a flight of stairs. She couldn't even walk up a flight of stairs. That's right. So that's not a conspiracy theory. And there, there's a lot of medical experts, too, who are saying that they see the the beginning stages of what they believe could be Parkinson's disease, right? So that's aside from InfoWars. But yet... You know, and we're going to show a classic hit piece right now from MSNBC, and and this is what it looks like when they go after Alex Jones, Infowars, and you just got to see it to believe it. If you guys can roll it, let's check it out. And I'll tell you, it is surreal to talk about issues here on air and then word for word hear Trump say it two days later. It is amazing. And it just shows how dialed in this guy is, and that's why they're so scared of him. Okay. The right-wing smear machine has gotten wish, wish Alex Jonesified this election cycle, <laughs> as we've been chronicling here. Jones is the conspiracy theorist and creator of the fringe website Infowars. He believes the Newtown Massacre was a false flag and the U.S. government is manufacturing gay people. Here's just a sampling of Jones' vocal stylings. I'm a pioneer. I'm an explorer. I'm a man. I'm a human. I like to I'm eat. Coming. I eat red meat. I'm animated. <laughs> I like to I'm make alive. babies. My heart's big. It's got hot See blood cherry going pick, through it cherry fast. Picking this. I like to fight too. <laughs> I like to eat. I like to have children. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> For the record, I like to eat and have oh, here it is. This year, Jones oh, is seen get, here got, wearing a lizard with... mask to discuss health care, <laughs> has embraced Donald Trump fully, heaping praise on Republican nominee and his team for their apparent acknowledgement of his movement. There's no way the Trump people would have reached out to me a year and a half ago if he wasn't aware of the work, Jones told the New Republic. He's been what you call a closet conspiracy theorist for 50 years. I think he's been a chameleon in the system and how he's, now he sees the time. Right. Yeah, this yeah. has become a full-fledged <laughs> obsession. Oh no, yeah. not just for Save Sean that Hannity, one for later. But, for but look, <laughs> when did he wear this? This was like back in 2012. I'm pretty sure that was <laughs> for, during for, a skit. For, for from a skit, and we see this all the time. In fact, I had to dig way deep in the closet to find this thing. Yeah, and uh, no, they always show that. Also, keep in mind that the very beginning of that video, mm -hmm. that was that was a new, uh, a, a recent video from our new studio. But the resolution was horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, they purposely had it in, in like the lowest resolution they could they could possibly, and that was that was intentional, yeah. right? To make us look like we're just fringe. Look, the audio was bad. They want to make it look like it's it's a broadcast coming out of you know the mother's Listen, basement. Listen, Rachel whatever. Maddow is just mad that we have more viewership than she does. Well, that was and, Rachel Maddow, right? And, well, you know, well, you never MSNBC see Chris again. Hayes and Rachel Maddow at a party together. <laughs> <laughs> that's, know, that's, so that's kind of weird. But no, it's a classic hit piece. <laughs> and now, and, and, and what was another one? Uh, oh, they, they go to old uh, Alex Jones videos from years ago when he was, uh, was he was chubby, all right? All right, they always, they like the, sh the chubby Jones. And also our studio wasn't as fancy, so they always go back to to old footage, and then they always bring out the, the lizard mask. And notice they said that Trump uh, supports Alex Jones and vice versa, and they show the lizard at the same time, the lizard mask. But let's show another clip, and this is uh, basically the mainstream media saying we're conspiracy theorists if uh, we believe that there could possibly be election fraud. <laughs> this thing's falling out. Nope, getting a little audio there. Great. Okay, so yeah, this is well, live, and we've yeah, got and then we out. we've heard that with uh, President Clinton as well coming out, he was just like <laughs> election fraud. <laughs> all those dead people voted for me. Well, in the in the Clinton presidency, they're all everyone's going to be well. Made. If Trump if Trump gets elected, he's going to be Secretary of Defense. Well, that, that's that's true. He's he's got he's got nothing but upside. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is just how people think and uh, the media manipulation. As Darren McBreen was saying, if you go to YouTube right now and you try to download one of our videos. 
I think the base resolution is like 720. That was like well, here's the thing, and, and this is what we do as editors. We pull video all the time mm -hmm. from YouTube, okay? And and as any good editor will do, a professional editor, you get the highest resolution possible. Yeah. So for them to pull these, and, and in fact, we don't even have videos that low. I, they intentionally no. did something to make it look horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, now well, I, I do I, believe we have uh, Margaret Howe, who's on the on site out there in the street. We just She's dropped been, her, guys. Oh, oh sorry, we lost her. TV. Oh, okay, yeah, we lost uh, Margaret. You know, I, I think it was interesting that stunt that they pulled last night. I think it's uh, just as you're talking about the the resolution that they uh, decide to pull these videos at, mm -hmm. uh, the the content that they decide to uh, slice and dice and take out of context. Uh, I think what they looked at last night, they had a conversation, said, you know, uh, Hillary's in a pickle. What can we do to show how healthy she is? Oh, a pickle jar. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like, I don't know. It's kind of ding, a subliminal ding. there. Maybe. Well, here's the thing is I knew <laughs> that they were just waiting to do this conspiracy theory card. Because you'll recall when Donald Trump actually came on the Alex Jones show, it was a great interview. He gave a really great interview. Alex was on point. They didn't even cover it. They barely even said, why the heck is Donald Trump going to visit the Alex Jones show? They pretty much just buried it because there was nothing they could say about it well, that was bad. And that's another thing, too. They do that a lot. It, if they don't ridicule you, they just pretend like you don't exist. Well, and right, do, now, and how many times have you heard somebody say, oh, that internet uh, conspiracy yeah, guy, yeah, uh, yeah, what's conspiracy his name? I don't know his name. Come on. They, uh, yeah. you know, Bill O'Reilly knows who Alex Jones is. Give right. me a break. Well, I mean, and that's the thing is like, so they've just been waiting until they're like, oh, we need to put that in our pocket. We'll wait to come after him on the conspiracy theory angle later on in the election cycle, because that's, you know, one of their trump cards uh, that they want to be able to pull. And meanwhile, they're the ones that are putting out all of these conspiracy theories, basically saying that he's a stooge for the Kremlin uh, when, when it's actually Hillary Clinton who has ties with Russia. So, you know, they're actually putting out the conspiracy theory saying that Russia is going to go in and change the metadata of these emails. So we can't even trust what gets leaked by WikiLeaks in the future because Russia's already, their hackers have already gone in and manipulated the content of the emails. They're the ones that are pumping out the conspiracy theories. It's Oh, and, and on that, uh, if we could pull up the front page of CNN, this was on there uh, probably about an hour or so ago. But I love this thing because now they're saying uh, when you talk about the conspiracy theorists, now the... Uh, Healthers, as they're being called, are the new birthers. <laughs> and you can see there in the top left corner, they have an article. It says, the new birthers debunking the Hillary Clinton health conspiracy. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument, it is a complete right-wing conspiracy. The woman's in perfect health. If we can go back to that screen, the, the video, the article right above that article is how, how healthy is Donald Trump? Right. So it's a conspiracy theory when you question Hillary Clinton's health. Well, but if you want to question the health of Donald Trump, then that's perfectly legitimate. Yes, well, that's what just earlier today on CNN, political analyst Kirsten Powers said that there's an element of sexism to raising questions about Hillary Clinton's health. A oh. mere hours oh. later on CNN, they have a doctor. They bring in a doctor to dissect Donald Trump's health report. So it's like they're mm -hmm. they're going to. Totally ignore the hashtag Hillary's health. That has been one of the top trending things, even though Twitter keeps trying to suppress that hashtag. They they aren't going to cover Hillary's health, but they're going to pivot to, well, let's talk about how old Donald Trump is and how unhealthy he is. They're also it's not like, going to talk about job. her political privilege. They're not going to talk, not gonna talk about her talk corruption. About the standard <laughs> that exists for her. Uh, they'll talk about uh, white privilege or anything else, but they won't talk about her her uh, political privilege. Oh, it's sickening. Uh, this is this is the key thing, I think. You know, we're looking at the situation with Hillary Clinton and these leaked emails, uh, and then also the emails that show criminal collusion, uh, RICO involvement, pay for play in order to get an audience with Her Majesty at the State Department to make things happen. You had to pay the Clintons to make that happen. Uh, this is corruption on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. This is right in our face. And even as we see these emails that she put on an unsecure server, in her we've had the NSA itself hacked. Now, whether it is a I, hacker or whether it is the Russians or whether it is a mole, the bottom line is, is that national security and the security state that is the basis for robbing us of all of our rights and due process uh, is basically a fraud. OK, right. it is a shambles. They, they can't even keep their own secrets. They've lost all the employee records have been hacked for the federal government employees. They've had the NSA's own hacking code hacked itself and released, being sold on the, uh, the dark web. Right. It's, this whole thing is a joke. When can we get rid of the Patriot Act? 
when can we get rid of the criminals like Hillary Clinton who operate the government in order to make themselves uh, billionaires out of this foundation? This right. is the kind of corruption that is destroying this country. And people need to focus on that. I'm concerned when we focus so much on her health that it is going to be used to uh, come back and say, you're, you're picking on her. She's, she's a little, a little old lady. lady. Yeah. She's a female. And, and that can backfire on us because it's very difficult for us to prove it unless you just... Flat out falls on the ground and goes starts but swallowing she her tongue like Caesar or something. Or something. <laughs> yeah, no, she really has, and but that's kind of it was like <laughs> we're just. But they're going to come out and they're going to say that we had FDR who was in a wheelchair. We had Greg Abbott yep. uh, who is in a wheelchair now, and and so they're going to say there's certain things that that don't make her. My my concern is that her conscience has been seared with a hot iron. Okay, <laughs> maybe that's why she's having these mental spasms. Is because she's such a. Uh, a pathological liar. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's, every time I right. see this and the and the shot with her looking at the balloons, you know, coming up. I mean, there's definitely something wrong with her. But we need to focus on the criminal character issues of the Clintons. It is a crime family. It is a RICO statute. We need to hammer that home, and we need to make it clear to people because this is an uphill struggle. Part of the way these criminals like her work is that they dribble this stuff out. And count on fatigue, and that's what we're seeing now with the uh, with the general public. Right, fatigue. Most people do lose interest, yeah. and it just it, I mean it gets exhausting to cover this stuff day in and day out, and especially when you have to deflect with everything that the establishment media puts out there. It's just it's so frustrating to see how much they're protecting her to the and point where it's like this is really truly wicked and and bad, like you say. I mean, yeah. this is our whole country is at stake right now, and just the way that they're just setting up this corruption and making excuses for it. This, you know, this it's, isn't it's the 30,000 emails or the 30,000 emails that her lawyers deleted before they handed the Who evidence cares about over to the lying FBI. Under this oath. is another 15,000 emails and it's other <laughs> documents that have been embargoed by, uh, it's still the Department of Justice has embargoed that other stuff, but this is stuff that was embargoed by the State Department, by other people. I mean, it's hard to get people to pay attention to it. We've got candidates who are successful so speak to people on a fourth grade level. It's one of the reasons why Donald Trump is doing so well. So she knows that and they know about the fatigue and that's what makes it so difficult. Right. It's they bombard us with criminality. We've got Margaret uh, Howell at uh, one of the live venues. Let's go to uh, Margaret now. Margaret. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Hi. We're going to have some bad. Well, are we getting uh, getting a bad reception there? You know, guys, I'm on the ground. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I visited the Hannity at two hours with Trump. It was two hours of no holds barred. The topic, illegal immigration, he did not disappoint. He packed the stands. The upper stands were packed. You know, there were some protesters on the ground, maybe 25 to 30 is what we counted. And he had the personal victims on the stage with him of those parents that, been, that had kids that had died at the hands of illegal aliens, three mothers. And he said, look, this, this issue, is one of the most important of my campaigns, if not the most important. He promised to build a wall. Hannity at one point said, you're going to build the wall. He said, yeah, 100%. That's, that was his message to the people of tonight. And he just packed the house. It was unbelievable. Margaret, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not he was going to uh, change his policy about deportation. Was uh, I'm sure that was a question tonight. Uh, what do you say about that? You know, David, he attacked federal judges for failing to deport illegals. He had three moms on the stage with him. At one point, he reached over and grabbed the lady's hand that lost her son. And she said, President Trump, you are the only one that has reached out to me and even apologized for these failed policies. He didn't seem to be backing down at all, David. What he did do is offer um, offer an olive branch, if you will, people that have worked hard, that have homes here, that contribute to society, that may have overstayed case. He does want, uh, it seemed to have a softer edge to it, softer reform. Now, Hannity, he taped this show two hours. It hasn't aired yet. We're bringing you up-to-date information on it, but it looks like Trump, he said, refugees and illegal immigration is are the most important issues of his campaign. Hannity says, uh, can you can you handle it? He says, we have to stop it. We can stop it. He's not backing down. Well, you know, when they had uh, people who had been victims of criminal illegal aliens who were not vetted when they came into this country, they had a lot of these people that uh, were probably people, either the people that were there tonight or other people like them at the Republican National Convention. Once they started letting these people tell their story on stage, we had mainstream media very quickly uh, turn to other things to cover. That's what we saw when that happened at the Republican National Convention. So it's good that they have a chance 
uh, to uh, talk about this. And I'm not sure if uh, he was aware. Did he mention uh, the situation that we just had in San Antonio that Don Salazar covered on Infowars.com yesterday about the uh, body that was uh, beheaded and the hands and feet were cut off? A, a woman, uh, the body was burned in a dumpster in San Antonio. Was there any mention of uh, that kind of cartel mm -hmm. violence that we're seeing right here outside of Austin? Right. There wasn't mention of that specific case, David, but there were countless cases mentioned just like that one. Uh, violent, despicable acts committed by um, our failed policies regarding illegal immigration and immigrants in the country committing murder. That was the topic of tonight's discussion. And the victims on that stage, they were mostly moms, and they were moms that had lost specifically sons to victims of these violent crimes. I think that's going to be really shocking because a lot of people have been saying, oh, it looks like Trump's shutting up his mouth on this whole immigration thing. He's going to try and placate the masses, change his tone on immigration. And I think, first of all, no way. If he's bringing uh, the head of Breitbart on, th that's what Breitbart does. They do such good journalism. They're one of the only outlets out there that's actually covering the cartel violence and how that's affecting us here in the United States. There's no way that he is... Uh, coaching Trump to back down on the immigration stance. But I think, uh, as Margaret points out, uh, prop softening that, there's a lot of us who think, you know what, there are people that have been in this country that do contribute and they wanted to leave that cartel violence. They're not these people that have just come in the last year or so specifically to take advantage of the policies that Obama has been pushing. Yeah. To try to get well, We have a lot of people possible. in this country that uh, have been convicted. Some of them have been deported multiple, multiple times, times, come back in and commit heinous crimes in America, even though they've been deported multiple times. The problem is not knowing who people are. People who are already here, you can vet those people. You can understand who they are. When somebody comes here, quote, and quote, quote unquote, as a Syrian refugee, you don't know who those people are. Right. The people in Syria don't know who they are. They don't even know if they're Syrian or not, okay? They can right. be from anywhere. Letting people come in without any kind of vetting or controlling is the issue. That is the central issue. Meanwhile, we've got the uh, EU chief, Jean-Claude Juncker, saying that borders are the worst invention ever, okay? Uh, <laughs> these people want a borderless global governance, okay? It's never been more clear that that is what they want. That will destroy the West. It will not elevate the people of other countries. What it will do is level us, bring us down to third world status. That is the leveling action of globalists, of socialists that we have. So um, we see Donald Trump has just now taken the stage. Uh, he's live there at the Ludecky Arena here in yeah. Austin, Texas. Yeah, let's go to a, a clip of this. Let's hear what he's saying. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. That's it's really going to be America first from now on. America first. Yeah. Think about how hard it takes Hillary it Clinton's handlers to work up her crowd. Yeah. <laughs> it is Americanism <laughs> versus globalism. So on the one hand, you have Donald Trump saying this. Then we have the chief of the EU saying borders are the worst thing ever invented. Looks like. We're going to cut taxes and create millions and millions of new jobs. And we are not going to allow other countries to steal our businesses any longer. Hmm. We're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. It's a disaster. And it keeps getting worse by the day, every year, all the big giants pulling out now. We're going to appoint judges yeah. who will support, defend, and uphold the Constitution of the United States. And that's very key. We're going to save and cherish our Second Amendment, which is under siege. We will ensure every veteran in this country has a right to seek medical treatment at a VA facility or with the private doctor of their choice if they don't get that kind of care. Sweet. We Too are many going veterans. to eliminate jobs. Well, it looks like Margaret's getting heckled out there on the sidewalk. She was sticking around the area where all the anti Trump protesters were at. Yeah, let's go back to Margaret Howell here in Austin, Texas, uh, where there was a. Uh, 
where Donald Trump spoke earlier to Sean Hannity. Margaret. <laughs> That's right. Well, the, the good news is that the passion and the turnout for Donald Trump has been overwhelming. There have only been a few hecklers. They were violent. Uh, we've got them on film. We're going to be bringing those to you guys later on. I can't believe some of this footage. Uh, but yes, yeah, so he actually said it. Just, oh, it looks like we're being heckled again. Sorry, guys. Um, Spin around. Let's, what do they want to say? Are they the commies? <laughs> oh. oh, looks like we lost the feed there. It's kind of marginal. His oh. views are not welcome in the city. Okay, his views specifically meaning? Meaning um, the agenda he has okay. towards people who are progressing in their life and moving okay. forward. <laughs> Does he believe that uh, people agenda. ought to be censored if he doesn't agree with them? Do that people are being censored? Um, censor is just like one of the things. I'm pretty sure it's more than censor. So can I ask you specifically, why do you not uh, like Donald Trump? What, what, what about he's policies? He's white and a nigga hater and... <gasps> do you say he's white? He stands for and his companies. Um, what do you make of Hillary Clinton, though, taking money from like Saudi Arabia well, you know, that cuts off the heads of gays and, clearly, and, and beats no, women? She is clearly doing some uh, wrongful choices, but wrongful it's not choices. just her. Hard, so hard choices, like, she said. And her and the choices that are being hard made. Donald Trump would probably make the same choices if he was in the same situation. Oh, I'd rather definitely. I'd rather roll the dice. Hillary Clinton has decades worth of scandals, so we, we already know how it's going to be with her. It's more like, well, do you hate gays or do you hate black? But Donald Trump has come out and said that he honestly he wants to protect the rights of gay. No, wait, he came out. Oh my <laughs> lord! I just can't stand when these uneducated people come on. That it's like I'm glad that they don't actually watch the media, but then you see they only are reading the headlines from Twitter and things like that, and so they're just saying these random headlines that aren't even true or they're seeing something on Twitter without even reading the article to get the facts. And so then he comes out and says, well, Donald Trump said he hates the gays. No, he literally never said that. You know, uh, Julian Assange <laughs> said that uh, we know precisely uh, what Hillary Clinton is. Uh, <laughs> she is somebody who yeah. hates the First Amendment. What is the first thing we hear out of this man's mouth? Uh, he's not welcome here. He shouldn't be allowed to speak. Uh, that's the way the left deals with it. First of all, they don't have any arguments. They just want to advance censorship. But he said uh, she is a, uh, a, first, a free, free speech uh, hater and she is a warmonger. We don't know exactly what Donald Trump is. We do have a long-term record that he has opposed unfair trade manipulation and trade control and economic control from outside of our country. That's what NAFTA, that's what Trans-Pacific and Transatlantic Partnerships are about. These things that masquerade as free trade, they are trade that is managed. It's management of our economy by forces outside of our country, unaccountable to us. That's why we should oppose it. And that's why he has opposed it for 30 some odd years, taking out editorials decades ago, talking about how bad these deals are. So I believe that he is authentic on that issue. Uh, I don't agree with him on every issue. I don't agree with any uh, candidate on every issue, but on the core issue right. of which we, where we can actually do something with the president, which is to stand against the march of globalism right. and to make sure that we still have a country with a border, which is what the EU people don't want. Right. And of course, we understand. Our George Soros, who yeah. Hillary is George Soros's candidate. It's a pattern of economic Arabia's consolidation provide, followed by political consolidation because they use the economic consolidation to create chaos and unrest, as we have seen in the other documents that have come out about George Soros, which the mainstream press will not even Won't acknowledge even exists, let it. alone talk about the content of those Soros documents, right. where he's sowing unrest. This guy is chaos. Remember back in the, uh, what was it? Was it uh, Get Smart or The Man from Uncle? But the, the villains were called chaos. You know, you had control <laughs> and you had chaos. I think it was uh, Get Smart. You had control and you had chaos, okay? Chaos is, is what George Soros is. And, of course, uh, they used his uh, quantum organization. That's what they uh, named the villains in, uh, in the James Bond movies about because uh, MI6 knows that he is a, uh, a James Bond villain. But that is what we're up against. It's globalism versus nationalism. And that is essentially self-determination and control at some degree of local level, of some degree of democracy. Remember, right. we had the uh, back and forth, one of the first back and forth that we covered a, a great deal with um, uh, uh, the guy with uh, UKIP. Uh, I, I'm, I'm losing his name right now, but Farage. yeah, Nigel Farage, Farage. thank you. 
when Nigel Farage uh, called out Herman von Rompuy and said, you have the demeanor of a third-rate bank clerk, who <laughs> gave you the authority to replace democratically elected governments in Greece and Italy and put in Goldman Sachs bankers in right. these countries? That's what we're seeing now. It is the globalists and the banks who are trying to run these countries. That's what this, uh, this is about. Uh, your comments, Margaret. That's right. You know, and honestly, speaking of that young man right now, the Trump supporters, the people that were that were attending that meeting, they were the most gracious, eloquent, well-behaved people. The only people that spit on us, that cussed at us, were Hillary supporters. That right. was <laughs> and communists who want to and make it, it, America it, communists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you, but Trump stayed true to message, and I just, I was so encouraged leaving that tonight, and he stuck true to the form that Mexico is going to pay that while he talked about the deficit that they have with us, and he was going to figure out a way to do this, and the most powerful moment of tonight for me, he reached across and grabbed the hand of one of those mothers that had lost a child that had been murdered at the hands of an illegal alien living here, and she he said, you know, he was like, what can I offer you? And she said, let me lay the first brick, and it was just such a powerful, powerful moment mm -hmm. in that auditorium. Well, and that's what a lot of people need to understand is that a lot of people who have immigrated to this country legally, a lot of people who have come from Mexico, from Central America, from South America, from these countries that supposedly Donald Trump hates, they are for Trump and they've been there. They know what they were escaping from. They don't yeah. want America to descend into the kind of chaos that they left. They like the law and order here. They like the fact that they don't have to pay $20 to the cop that pulls them over for no reason at all. They don't want Every the corruption that is embodied by Hillary Clinton. They don't want that kind of corruption. They don't want the drug cartels to follow them right. across the border. They don't want ISIS terrorists to follow them across the borders. And of course, the border is wide open. Whether it is a physical wall or what is going to be done, we're not really sure. And quite frankly, I have concerns as a libertarian about a wall because that can be used to keep you in or it can be used to keep other people out. Mm -hmm. So that's a very dangerous line to walk. But we always understand that whenever we give power to government, we always have that kind of danger that is involved. Because anytime you hand over uh, power to government, there's always the potential for abuse. Who watches right. the watchers? Okay. Right. And we don't frankly, have a very good record of controlling that here in this country. We mm -hmm. see what happened with the uh, man who was deaf in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, shot at his home uh, because he was speeding. He gets out uh, gesturing to the uh, police officer who doesn't understand what he's saying, shot him dead. I, I guess the excuse is uh, if hand gestures and, and, and sign language could kill, I'd be dead by now, okay? Right. I mean, that's we have to get some control over this. And when I look at that story, what makes me so angry about it is that Black Lives Matter has turned this into a legitimate concern about uh, how do we control the unauthorized use of force like that? How do we keep somebody from acting like Barney Fife? And how do we uh, get control of, of the way the police conduct themselves? They took that turned off the table race. It's and only, just turned it into racial unrest. It's only and black that was men a plan by killed. George Soros. Uh, yeah, exactly. Of course, uh, he was funded them six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And you know, here with this latest instance with the uh, deaf mute man who was shot and killed, white guy shot by a black trooper. So there, it doesn't fit into that narrative. Yeah. Uh, but but it does fit into the narrative of people who do not have the mental or physical capacity to be in that situation. They're acting like Barney Five with a fully loaded gun instead of one bullet that he keeps in his pocket. Mm -hmm. The problem is that has been encouraged by the federal government under their rules of engagement. And so when I look at situations like the wall, that does concern me how that's going to play out. But we have to get control of that somehow, just as we have to have uh, control of what's going on in law enforcement in our, our various jurisdictions. Yeah. And that's not happening either. But Well, and that's the thing is that we saw with Ferguson and all that, the entire country, even the world, was really behind that saying, this is a problem. We need to scale back. We don't need to militarize the police. And then all of a sudden, the, these paid for groups moved in and turned it into divide and conquer because they don't want us working together. And here, I mean, I look at this standing behind Trump and I can just see why the establishment is so afraid of him because regardless of the narrative that they put out that this country is so divided and it's all about the alt-right racists who they're the only ones voting for Trump. Look at the guy standing behind him. I mean, the row there, you've got 
that just all different kinds and these young men they're probably all friends go to this thing together um, all different colors ages class you know how great is that and that yeah. is why they are so afraid of him because he has tapped into something in this country that they know they've been funneling George Soros millions yeah. mil hundreds of millions of dollars to stop this and to push that new world order globalist agenda. Well, it truly is, as the Clintons understand, it is the economy stupid. Mm -hmm. And people understand that uh, we have seen, as Ross Perot said, we've seen the giant sucking sound uh, in action now for 20 years. Mm -hmm. People on the left need to understand this. And people on the left need to understand, just as Julian Assange says, we know what Hillary Clinton is. We know that she is a corrupt criminal. She is a gangster, a mafia figure. Right. Uh, and she should not be in office. She's a warmonger. She hates free speech. She hates the First Amendment. She hates the Second Amendment. She hates all the Bill of Rights, okay? She's just a sweet little grandma. We don't know what Donald Trump is going to do with the Bill of Rights. He hasn't talked about it a great deal. But we do know that he is going to oppose some of the worst effects that could happen from globalism. We know that uh, he is going to do things that are going to help us, not destroy us economically. That's what I think he needs to focus on. I think he needs to get off of the health issue. I think he needs to focus on what he's going to do on, on health care. When he says repeal and replace, a lot of people have said that. But, you know, Donald Trump has a very has a good detailed plan. plan on his site. And he's had it for a very long time. Going back to uh, the second or third debate, they put out a very detailed policy statement about health care. What he does is create a marketplace. He gives you information. He empowers you to make those decisions. And he opposes a mandate with a marketplace. That is a very libertarian thing. I don't understand why they're not talking about that in more detail. I don't understand why a lot of uh, uh, people who support Donald Trump are not talking about that. <laughs> He's saying, who's going to pay for the wall? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And here he's shutting up the the media who's we saying have Trump's changing his tune. Deficits with Mexico, with China, with Japan, with everybody. Those deficits will go away. We're going to bring our jobs back. You're going to be so happy. But Mexico, <laughs> in fact, will pay for the wall 100. percent Yeah, you know, yeah. like Immediately I said, you know, he did. is a jobs creator. He's got. I going mean, that's to hundreds of thousands of law. jobs right there. After, immediately wall. after we passed NAFTA, <laughs> we had been essentially in a parity uh, in your terms of uh, trade with Mexico. It immediately went to a $15 to billion dollar deficit, and then it has ballooned to, to uh, 60 country. and a plus billion dollars on an annual basis now. And this has been going on for decades since we put this in. About 20 some odd years this has been going on. People on the left talked about this while Bernie Sanders was we in office. We saw the people who were Bernie uh, while he was running. We saw the people at the Democrat National Convention the with the no TPP signs. Mm -hmm. uh, they understood. But those are Bernie supporters, yeah. okay? Hillary Clinton is for these globalist trade deals, regardless of what she says now. She right. picked uh, Kane, who is for it, and she has been for it in the past. And this she's, is why the bankers are supporting her. They understand she's going to be there for her, for them, uh, just as uh, uh, Gary Johnson is trying to prostitute himself to Wall Street yeah. and the globalist uh, on that issue. Well, well. she's proven she's time and time it. again that she has no problem flip-flopping. And when yeah. she does, they cover for her and say, well, look at how she's evolved. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, she's been wrong on everything, and that's why she's had to flip-flop. And she's going to do it again on the TPP. Like, oh, sorry, guys, but m my globalist buddies... I promised him I'd get the job done. Uh, I think we should take a break, uh, go to a commercial break, and we're going to come back. We're going to have some uh, more information. We're also going to play uh, some additional reports. So we've got another report from uh, Owen uh, when he was uh, talking to uh, a grandma for Crooked Hillary. So we're going to hear what the grandma for Crooked Hillary says. We're also <laughs> going to play uh, what Gary Haven said about uh, what he saw in Haiti. I think it's very important for you to understand the fraud of the Clinton Foundation. They are not helping people, okay? This isn't about helping people. Shutting down the Clinton Foundation isn't going to send somebody to hell, as James Carville said, okay? <laughs> we need to send Hillary to prison. I'm not saying send her to hell. I wouldn't <laughs> wish that even on Hillary Clinton, but uh, she does need to go to the big house, not the White House. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with those reports as well as with our reporters who are at the Trump rally happening now in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to this live edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. We have Donald Trump in Austin, and he is making a speech right now. Let's go back to the live feed that we have of uh, Trump speaking here in Austin. Okay, he 
it just looks like he's bringing up the mothers again that Margaret was telling us yeah. about earlier. So these are probably those moms, if I had to guess. Yeah. He had uh, family members at the uh, earlier event that he had here in Austin with Sean Hannity. That was a taped event that's going to run tonight on Hannity's show. But he was talking about immigration at that event. Uh, Margaret Howell was there, our other reporters uh, from InfoWars that, that covered that. And he, and he said that uh, I also he spoke want to, to the victims. Very, very special people that I've gotten to know over the years. And they've given me their endorsement, first time ever in their history. The Border Patrol, folks, they are so good. They would like to do their job. They're yeah. not being allowed to do their job. Right. Because we don't follow the laws in uh, Obama's America go. or Hillary's America. Yeah. They do whatever they wish. That's why we keep seeing people who have already been deported multiple These times coming back people. in. Yeah. The suffering that the families have gone through Jeez. is incredible. And Jameel Shaw, another friend of mine, what he's gone through is just unbelievable. So I just want to thank you. I want to say that we are with you 100%. And your children did not die in vain because we're not going to allow it to happen to others. So thank you very much. And that's key. Everyone needs to remember Donald Trump was the only one. Uh, President Obama still hasn't been to the border. He doesn't dare talk about the problems there at the border. Hillary Clinton hasn't been. So you remember last year, Donald Trump was the Give only one who went to the border, border who took a look to say what's actually going on there. Are there truly hundreds of thousands of unaccompanied minors making their way across the border? And yes, indeed there was. And that's what really fueled his presidential bid. Uh, he said, this is insane. We've got to do something about this. Yeah, and if you don't think that what is happening in Germany is going to happen here. You have to understand that Angela Merkel is a harbinger of Hillary Clinton. This is going, what's happening in Germany with multiple terrorist attacks. We've already seen just in the last couple of days, we had a man in Roanoke, Virginia, and a woman stabbed and tried to cut the guy's head off yeah. as he's shouting Alhu Akbar. Okay. We also had uh, a dismembered female body, hands and feet and head cut off, set on fire, put in a dumpster, right here in san antonio yeah now this is just two incidents in a couple of days right. so what is happening in germany what is happening in france is a harbinger of the policies that hillary clinton and other globalists and both the democrat and the republican party want to bring to this country that is the issue that will happen in this country and it will accelerate they're bragging at the end of Ramadan, John Kerry goes to uh, has a bunch of Muslims and at the end of Ramadan bragging about the fact that in a country where they have initiated warfare, initiated civil war in Syria, we create the problem, we create the war. And then after we've got everybody good and angry about all of the innocent lives that have been lost there, what do we do? We bring those people who have been recruited into terrorism by John Kerry and the Obama uh, State Department's and Hillary Clinton's State Department's foreign policy. We bring those people here to enact vengeance on us. Right. And that's what this is about, bragging that they brought in six times the number of people this year they did the previous year. Mm. Uh, unvetted people from Syria. No, we it's like they, Hillary Clinton and her, her cronies go, they create the chaos that's there, they bomb these countries into oblivion, and then they bring the kids, the young kids who are angry and who hate the West, who are looking at these bomb capsules that land there next yes. to their dead cousins and brothers and sisters that say made in the USA. And they want to kill us in retaliation. So that's exactly what they've done. They've gone to cause the chaos there. And then they're like, come on in, we'll take care of you. Because they know they're not going to be put in their neighborhood. And the drug war. Okay, they go out and they start the Syrian war. They start the drug war in Mexico. Okay, and then after they have created this violence, they import it into our country. Mm -hmm. In the past, if there was a war, we could create a safe area. We could help people in country, uh, in theory, okay? Foreign aid has never worked out that way. Foreign aid typically goes to the despots at the top, okay? I understand that. But it's, re it's absurd to not even try to do that. Instead, to bring the people who you have made enemies of your country, mm -hmm. that you have bombed them in the name right. of the United States, bring them into this country. That, well, like even that here with these, wants to do. with these families talking about their back. kids. I let's mean, let this uh, lady speak because we haven't, I don't want to cut them off and start talking over them like they did on uh, CNN. So let's let these uh, people speak General a little bit. General judges in our court system.
Thank you. Thank you, Texas. I'm a German legal immigrant and my only <laughs> and my only child, my only child, my son was killed four years ago. So if a few of you still feel that compassion for illegal families not being separated, this is what I have of my family, his ashes. I have no family left. And the only one that will protect you your family and future generations is our next president, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mm. Well, that's it. They do want to tug on people's heartstrings, and it does, you know, it, it, it tugs on mine. But it's like, that's the thing is we don't want to listen to these people who the policies uh, were being told by the Obama administration, by Hillary Clinton, that we have to allow people who want to come here illegally. We need to fast track their access to this country to become citizens rather than the people who have been waiting for years to become U.S. citizens and do it the right way. Why are we fast tracking people? And especially, like, as well, he's pointed out, people that have had criminal records been deported multiple times. As we saw with the young black man arguing with the older black man that we uh, put out that viral video that went out. Uh, the, the older black man who had been coached by the media, coached by the Democrats, could not fathom the difference between legal and illegal immigration. He right. absolutely had no idea. He, you know, it, that distinction did not exist. Just Let's like go the, back to, the commie uh, that got shut down by Owen. Yeah, exactly. Let's go back to uh, Donald Trump. Another speaking. corruption scandal that strikes at the heart of our country and our democracy. Every day, more and more, Alarming facts come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every day. It's a constant trickle, and that's the way they put the people to sleep. It's that constant trickle of uh, criminal activity. I guess there's a heckler now. Must be a heckler. heckler yeah. Trump he's, gave him the... He's waiting. The heave-ho <laughs> signal. Yeah. Uh, they don't like free speech. Well, see, and here's the thing is, like, look at the people behind Donald Trump. <laughs> All these guys that you can tell they're friends. That is truly America right back there. They want you to think it's so racist, it's so divided, everybody hates each other. And you can see right there, <laughs> it's not true. It'll be interesting to hear our, we do have reporters inside of the Expo Center, so it'll be interesting to hear from them later on about what is actually happening there. We can't see the cameras aren't on, but. Yeah. <laughs> These are people who don't have anything to say and they don't want you to be able to say it either. Yeah. But we can see by the people that are behind Trump that it's actually been a quite a peaceful rally. And there are people of all different backgrounds who are here for Trump. But the media is probably going to focus on the one heckler and the way the crowd threw him out. I guarantee it. Yep. <laughs> wow, it must have. still going on. Yeah. They, they might be doing the tactic where they'll one will get up and say something and then someone else. So they have to really disrupt the, the live event here. Uh, but this is this is what's so interesting is that we had uh, Owen Schroer was talking in the video we watched at the top of the hour. Uh, thuggish commies try to intimidate reporter. One of the things that the guy was saying was how Donald Trump hates immigrants, even though he's married to one. And Owen was like, so you basically just negated your own point because obviously he doesn't hate immigrants. He's married to one. What he has a problem with is he wants to uphold the laws that we they have in this the country. Between a legal and an illegal immigrant. <laughs> and again, that's that was that was part of the argument that that guy was making with the younger man. Okay, the the two of them going back and forth. It was all about, uh, you know, you, you can't understand the difference between a legal and an illegal immigrant. That's uh, not in their vocabulary. <laughs> Let's go to the uh, report while we're waiting for them to clear out. Or do, the do we have Jakari or D McBreen? Do you guys have any? Yeah. You guys yeah we're, we're just watching the scene here, the <laughs> spectacle of it. And this is what we see at a lot of these events. You know, uh, just as you were saying there, Leanne, we're probably going to focus on the one or two guys got kicked out, not the thousands of people that assembled there peacefully. Yeah, they don't yeah. want them to have uh, the, the right to listen to a speech, okay? They don't like to have free speech. They don't want to tolerate free speech. They're very intolerant. Well, they, they, don't, have, they don't like free speech, Dave, because they don't have any speeches their, of their own. Because as we saw with Owen, all they could say was F this and F Donald Trump and F you and he's a racist and he's a sexist. And just yeah. like the guy said, he doesn't like immigrants. Like, he's married to an immigrant. Yeah. Well, they, they regurgitate <laughs> the talking points. But one thing I want to point out is... 
you know, be sure to stay tuned or, or look at the Alex Jones channel on YouTube after this, because what tends to happen at these Trump rallies is after it's over, that's when a lot of these uh, protesters and agitators, they will start heckling everybody that leaves the auditorium. Yeah. Right. So that's a very there's, good there's chance that that could happen. Yeah, yeah, there'll be some traffic jams there. People won't be able to make oh, it Oh, they will the door, egg your so. car. They will, they will key it. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll call you names in front of your children, you know, and, and you know, uh, you know, verbal abuse, bad language, all that. All with but, their faces covered, of course. And all with their faces red. and their commie flags, right? <laughs> but hey, our, our guys are out there and they're, they're going to be posting videos. Uh, as long as the action's there, they're going to be posting that stuff. Yeah, so see yeah, and It's, it's really it. interesting to me that the commies have gotten more cowardly from the last time we met them a year ago. Hmm. Because uh, <laughs> the, the dovetail on what Owen was saying in that earlier video, he's like, yeah, we, we went to Alex Jones, we punched him in the face. I was there that day. <laughs> Nobody got punched in the face. Now, what did happen <laughs> was a guy... In some skinny jeans was like shoving old people out to the street. He shoved Ronnie Reefer seat. He's a well-known Austin activist. He shoved him out on the street. He was they were yelling at David's wife. And then one guy, he was just running around shoving all these people. So I get in the guy's face. And he's looking past me like I'm not even standing there. Then he snatches Alex's microphone, tries to run away, but he can't because his jeans are too tight. And then he slides <laughs> over a trash can. Yeah. He ran now, like I, a duck. Oh, look, they got video right here. They got video. Over now, the, I, I know this sounds can. sensational, but this actually happened. That's what actually happened that day. And look yeah. at these guys. That is like some of the least threatening people. I mean, there's not, Darren McGreen, I know you, you grew up, you're a tough guy. You know, you got in a few brawls. Is it the most manly thing that you have ever seen to snatch a guy's microphone and then run away like a little girl? <laughs> that, that's pretty that tough, was, man. Like, that, was, that guy could comedy. be in the it UFC. It looked like an episode of Benny Hill or yeah, something. Yeah, like, it's like <laughs> yeah, it'd be in the, the next UFC fight. You know, here's what I think, though. I think, I think lately it's it's trendy and, and popular to be an anti-Trump type of person. I and, do agree and, with that. You know, when, when I was growing up, I learned, unfortunately, from, from television, SNL, Saturday Night Live, they used to make fun of Jimmy Carter all the time. Yeah. And it was it was late into my teens, late teens and, and early 20s, I thought Jimmy Carter was the worst president in history. Mm -hmm. And the reason why was I got it all off television, man. Yeah. All off television. There was no basis for me to believe that other than what I saw on TV. Well, it's just like Owen out there with that 15 year old girl who was out there saying, Get rid of Alex Jones. And then he's like, yeah. Well, why? And she's like, I don't even know who that is. And you know he's what? like, Just like, you <laughs> well, know, communism and, is. Obviously. And that just shows that there is hope for some of these people. You know <laughs> what I mean? Eventually they will learn. And we do plant those seeds, ladies and gentlemen. And eventually, you know, you, you just we've seen it happen to a lot yeah, of just, people we've uh, talked to over the years. Like uh, the video you're talking about earlier that I shot in uh, Atlanta with Quintarius and the older gentleman. Oh, yeah. And Quintarius, you know, he's 16 years old. You know, he's a good kid. You know, he goes to school. He goes to work. You know, he, he doesn't bother anybody. He's just out there minding his own business. And then some guy comes up and tries to heckle him. The guy has no argument. All he can do is spout talking points. He's like, <laughs> Donald Trump's. Granddaddy was in the KKK. He was like, the kid was like, you Google it. That's not even true. And, I, and, and that's what happens with so many of these rallies. Because what you're going to find is Hillary is. Yeah, and that's what happens with some of these rallies. These guys, all they have is talking points. All they have is intimidation. And when you don't fall away, just like what Owen did, when he's not scared of these guys, when he can actually speak for himself, then they just say, F you, and you know, do their chance and all this other stuff. They have no argument. Well, the guy, yeah. the guy holding the sign that literally said Trump equals xenophobic, racist, homophobic, sexist, and no one's like, well, why do you hate Trump? And the guy was like, uh, what, what does my sign say? Uh, I mean, it's just all yeah. the talking points. Or no hate in our state. They'll hold a, a sign up, no hate in our state, while they're, while they're flipping you off. Yeah, and, you know, while they're beating you. you and spitting on Margaret. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know, you were talking about Saturday Night Live, Darren, mm -hmm. and how they uh, came after Jimmy Carter. They also came after, I think even harder, Gerald Ford at the time. I remember how oh, yeah. they made fun of the fact that uh, he tripped and fell. Oh, he'd fall and, down all the time. Yeah, that he yeah. that he, he you know he had a couple of incidents, uh, not nearly as many as Hillary Clinton had. No. Okay, no. I mean he had never had anything like the uh, spastic reaction that she had when multiple people started talking to her, or the way she looked at the balloons. But I mean, you know that that is is something that would truly be rich comedy material. Well, right. if well, she were a Republican, someone if, that's broken as many bones as she has and cracked her head and this and that yeah. from falling yeah. so much. Yeah. My, my grandma's older than Hillary Clinton and has has never broken any bones or fallen or anything. So I'm sorry, that's a that's an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and it just shows you how powerful the media was then and truly is now. Thank God for the internet because a lot of people are waking up. But, That's right. you know, I've talked on this show several times how a lot of people that don't necessarily watch the television news 
or uh, read the newspapers, even though they get a biased opinion, but they, they, they don't watch the news or read newspapers and they still form a strong political opinion mm -hmm. simply by watching television movies or going to the movies or and watching Twitter. Twitter or Facebook. Yeah, they yeah. think they mm -hmm. can learn the, the yeah. in-depth reporting by 150 characters. Or oh, that's a, that's a great point because you guys were talking about that. I think me and Land were talking about this earlier, how uh, Mikhail Thalen put out an article today where he was uh, putting out a video on Twitter is saying how basically how Twitter was blocking certain things is the it's quality, a quality filter. filter. Yeah. So like right. you, you, if you want quality, you can't get an opinion outside of the leftist liberal point of view. So yeah, they don't define that's the what quality, quality yeah. is. Exactly. You know, and by the way, that they automatically do that to you. Most people, if you're on Twitter right now, you might not even realize that you've already been filtered. So the information, just like what Facebook did some years back, they created this filter that's set to the algorithms. And so it creates this echo chamber where you're not getting any alternative viewpoints. You're only going to yeah, hear the a, things that you like, the a, things that you agree with. Ministry of Truth, straight out of 1984. Exactly. Yep. Quietly, there, it's the quality filter. Yeah. Darren. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's a lot of protesters out there this yeah. evening and a lot of agitators like we expected. But I have to say I'm very proud of Austin, Texas tonight. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that was another full capacity crowd at a Donald Trump rally. And I think that the, the credo, Americanism, not globalism, I think it's really starting to resonate with people. People are and getting it. And it scares the crap out of the establishment. The, that diverse like crowd back there behind mm -hmm. Trump, I mean, when you see when the camera pans back, because right now you can just see, you know, five or so people. But when you actually pan back that camera, um, obviously these aren't our cameras, we can't do it. But th there are so many different kinds of people back behind them and that has the Democrats and, and we see that every in their state boots. we go to and you just walk down the line there's people of all different colors ethnicities everything and and it's and it's so obvious when you don't see that on the mainstream television yeah, yeah they always like want to show you the guy with a John Deere hat you know, absolutely. Camo shirt. <laughs> absolutely when we went out to Milwaukee uh, I think it was Rob Dew he did an interview with a Chinese couple Chinese for Trump mm -hmm. yeah. you know there, there's people of all kinds of backgrounds but they don't want to show you that they just want to show you this very narrow view I just I was watching this Trump video on Live Leak today. I guess it was a recent rally he had where the cameraman just refused to zoom out and show how many thousands of people were in the facility. <laughs> yeah. and, and, they, and they do things like that. Oh, they'll shaping show you like the, the news. Yeah, they'll, they'll show you like the ten guys who were outside, you know, after the rally started an hour ago, but they don't want to get there. And meanwhile, early. they're well, they, photoshopping Hillary's rally. Yeah, right? well, to they make show it look like you they yeah. show you videos <laughs> of like the Bernie supporters beating up the Trump supporters mm -hmm. and literally telling you as you're watching it. That it's the violent Trump supporters at these rallies who are doing, and it's like, no, we're there. Oh, the there. Trump supporters had, they just <laughs> agitated him so bad they had to punch him in the face. Or like, they threw yeah. an egg in that girl's face. Exactly. You know, because she had on a, a t-shirt. And they or basically they said better, she was asking for it. Or he should know better than to go to Chicago because we oh, know Okay, good point, Dave. Yeah, he should know to better to go to these places. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's Trump's fault for stirring up all this civil unrest to mm -hmm. begin with. Yeah. You know, right. one of the things that we're, we see when we look at this, the, the crowd that's there, one of the things, uh, one of the reasons that I think um, he may not be showing, I think the polls are being manipulated, quite Absolutely. frankly. Yeah. But Absolutely. also, they're not polling people in general who have not been likely voters, okay? They always like to go out and find likely voters. That means people who have voted recently in a lot of these elections. A lot of the Trump supporters are people who have been totally fed up with the Tweedledee, Tweedledum of mm. the Bushes and the Clintons, <laughs> and they're not interested in voting in these elections. Finally, they see we've got a choice. We've got somebody who is clearly an outsider. He is uh, putting up a very different agenda than we've had. And all of these people at the top, whether it's Republican or Democrat, are allied against him. So this guy is a true <laughs> outsider. He's been consistent on opposition to these uh, trade deals that are destroying our economy. That's an economics issue. So you've got a lot of people who are going to vote for the first time. They're not going to show up in these polls, even if they weren't trying to rig these polls. Yeah. They're not going to show up. I'm sorry, I don't so. mean to be just so happy and giggling here, but I'm just watching these young men that are standing behind Trump, and they are just so pumped. I don't even know what he's <laughs> saying. Maybe we could go back to what he's talking about, but... I mean, they are just like in November, <laughs> eating it up. The American Energized. It's not just we'll old white guys. That she <laughs> is not. We will have a tremendous victory on November 8th. We will win. Lord willing. And we will make America great they again. Need a, they're definitely going to need a landslide because they're already making moves to roll Clinton into you the White House. You will be voting for justice. I think it's a very, Fairness, very important what uh, Roger Stone was talking about today in terms jobs. of the different things that we can do we to monitor the election. We need to understand mm -hmm. that exit polls that are being conducted. Typically, there, there's one organization that does it for all the mainstream media. 
And all we see, the media, and, and, you know, they pull the results for Fox News, for CNN, for ABC, NBC, CBS, okay? They pull, it's a pool that's done of these uh, exit polls. But we only get the demographic cross-tabulations. In other words, how many women like this candidate? Mm -hmm. How many people with a college education like that candidate or so forth? Mm -hmm. We don't get a direct comparison of the results that happened at particular polling places or even on a state-by-state -state basis. We don't get a comparison of what uh, they tell us the vote was versus exit polls. Those are the types of things, and Roger had a lot of uh, various uh, uh, techniques that we can do to monitor the vote. Yeah. That is key. Have we to need get to get honest elections, up. just like we need to get people like Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton out of government so we can have an honest government. And one of the ways that you get honest government is to start with the elections. It's mm -hmm. not going to be easy. Uh, this is a bootstrap operation. There isn't any uh, There isn't any pattern for this. Nobody is going to do it for us. We're going to have to figure out how to do this right. he says, and do it incrementally, but we're going to have to do it or they're going to steal this election. Yeah, get, getting an independent uh, council in there to go and check these these booths that people say, you know, hey, I voted this way and it's showing that where we're seeing this corruption, because we see it every single election cycle. People complain that their votes switched. Uh, they've even taken video of it. And so getting someone, an independent group, to go in there and look at the software that are and when at they come in places. and say that it can't happen, okay, mm -hmm. and they don't want to join with us. Look, if they wanted free and fair elections, they would be as upset about it as we are, okay? We don't want anybody. We don't want somebody rigging the election for Trump. We don't want somebody rigging the election for Hillary Clinton. And right. if they wanted a free and fair election, they would be as concerned about monitoring this as we are. The very fact that they dump cold water on any suggestion that there could be fraud in something where there is so much money and right. power involved that uh, they would say there point. couldn't possibly be fraud in that. We yeah. don't possibly, we shouldn't have to have any kind of identification or photo ID for people to vote. Right. Give me a break. Or no These are accountability. The people that require your photo ID if you travel, you, to cash a check, to, to to conduct business with them, use your credit card. To get into the gym, you've got to use your thumbprint. There is I a mean, lot more at stake than all the inventory of all the Walmarts combined here, okay? Right. This is the, the, the keys to the kingdom, the way that they have uh, sold access and privilege, the way the Clintons have, the way the establishment Republicans have as well. That's why they don't want honest elections. We wow. have to demand that. And people on the left should be as upset about this and demanding that the election be monitored and validated as much as we are. I, yeah, I find I it think, very disturbing that uh, we don't get that kind of support from uh, the Bernie Sanders people, for example. They know the election right. was stolen. They know that there are certain techniques with superdelegates and everything, but they know that there were also uh, very suspicious results that were phoned in. And we've seen that happen with Ron Paul as well. Mm -hmm. And Ron Paul did not call him on that. I wish he had. Right, you know? I do as well. And it's, it's pretty... It's pretty um, extreme what you're saying with how the left doesn't care as long as it's rigged in their favor yeah. but who knows how it could be you know in the next four years or whatever they really they should be concerned and you're and absolutely right in the same reason that they don't care about the executive orders mm -hmm. okay but now they do care because there's a possibility that it won't be their guy who is a dictator and they always see it this way and i've actually you hear them talk about it. bill maher said we don't want donald trump to rule over us I would agree with him. I don't want Donald Trump to rule over us either. I want him to obey the law. But the Democrats have accepted the mindset that every four years we elect a new tyrant, a new dictator. We cannot take that mindset. We cannot mm -hmm. accept a tyrant as no. president. We cannot accept the fact that they're going to rule by the what is in their mouth as a definition of a dictator. We cannot accept that they're going to rig the elections. That should oh, be look, unacceptable. Oh, look, there's Ashley. I see our reporter, Ashley. She's super excited. All right. A Trump supporter back there. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> but people are, I mean, look at all of these different people that the media tries to tell you does not exist. Black people, Hispanic voters, their um, old grandmas, and <laughs> black guys with their white friends and uh, everyone they're trying to these are we're basically witnessing uh, the abominable snowman right now or, or santa claus i mean how did all of these people that the media has been telling us doesn't exist how they get them all inside this one exposition center i mean this is one of the reasons why i love austin texas is because this really is what it looks like here i mean everyone's yeah, just like me too. me too totally diverse and they love this country i mean most of them we do have our uh <laughs> The commies. We do have our um, 
long armpit haired that like to dye their <laughs> I kill my kids. And kill my kids. <laughs> All right, well, Donald Trump has wrapped up his speech. Uh, Jakari, Darren, you guys want to make any final comments before we wrap up our live broadcast here on the Nightly News? Yeah, I'd just like to say good job to the crew, not just the people here, but also the people out in the streets. They had to endure a lot of things today, not just the hot temperatures, but the hot attitudes of the people out there, as we were saying <laughs> earlier. You know, the Trump people, they're not the ones out there spitting at people. They're not the ones cussing at people. They're not the ones that we saw in Albuquerque uh, throwing barricades at the horses and lighting stuff on fire. No, it's the opposition of that. And they're not all Hillary supporters. Some of them are just, you know, goofy communist kids. But it, it really is a showing of what attitudes there are in America. Because I'll try to show you the one guy, the couple guys who will wear a Trump shirt and they get into some scuffles. But they don't want to show you all this other stuff that's going on. So I just like to say good job to the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job to the crew. And be sure to check out uh, you know, our Facebook tonight and YouTube because the fireworks could be just starting. All right, like yeah. I said, when, when these rallies in that's when a lot of these guys show up and and get aggressive so just be sure to check out youtube and check out infowars.com uh tonight and tomorrow that's right and we had several reports from our reporters that they'd already filed before we went live that we did not have time uh, to go to tonight those are also up on our youtube channel really good reports interview. yeah really funny mm -hmm. you guys you guys are gonna i think you're gonna see a young alex jones and our new reporter uh, hey, owen, owen is Troyer. great isn't he he is, <laughs> he is that, that guy yeah. is, he's Taking a rock star the streets. already <laughs> <laughs> right. you gotta watch this video grandma for crooked hillary speaks out he lets her he almost lets her get the last word <laughs> <laughs> almost well you know those those uh, guys those young communists they're not going to be dangerous until they get older and they stop uh, parading around the streets, spitting on people, and they go into education like Bill Ayers. That's when they'll become dangerous because mm -hmm. that's when they're going to get a hold of your kids if you are foolish enough to put them in a government school, mm -hmm. and they're going to indoctrinate them into their own peculiar brand of hatred and division. That's when they'll become dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, they're kind of pathetic, aren't they? But uh, that's when they're really going to become dangerous. Well, like you see the girl, the 15-year-old that's from Russia out there with these commie kids and yeah. he's like you should know the difference and she's like i do know why <laughs> or, am i here <sighs> or pretending they don't know venezuela and quite frankly they're so uninformed maybe they don't know never yeah. heard of venezuela or the uh, sandinistas or the sandinistas as i like yeah they don't want to get into debate they just want to fight they want to cause anarchy they want this country to fail that that's their argument is that that capitalism has clearly failed, so we need to go back to communism, which has killed hundreds of millions of people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's it for our report tonight. Again, uh, check our YouTube stream for the reports of various reporters. Uh, also, as Darren pointed out multiple times, there will probably be something happening as these rallies break up. The hatred uh, will be uh, there still in the streets. They'll be attacking Trump supporters if past events or any history yeah, of that. Yeah, we've got a... So uh, check our YouTube channel as well. I had an interesting interview with Roger Stone this afternoon where he went into wow. a great deal of detail about Vince Foster. That's something else that even if you remember that period of time, there's a lot of people who are too young to, under, to remember that. Uh, Refresh that in your memory. There are so many different uh, issues on that. And, People who were and caught Roger up. Stone really knows those events and really laid out the corrupt pattern of behavior that goes back 23 years ago, mm -hmm. six months after Bill Clinton became president. That even then, the Wall Street Journal was saying they the problem with the Clinton administration is it is careless about following the law. Yeah, well, people who are really <laughs> into that Netflix show, Making a Murderer making of a murder or whatever that show was called, who were just really into it and just how could they have convicted this guy? I mean, they need to go back. Netflix needs to make a series with this Vince Foster case because there's so many things there that you're just going to go, what? Yeah. How? How? How did this happen? If you like a good Very, uh, Sherlock Holmes mystery. Who done it? <laughs> That's check it. out this interview. Yeah, check out that interview. That's it for tonight's Nightly News, our live edition. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. We've been joined here in the studio by Darren McBreen and Jakari Jackson. Of course, our reporters who are on the ground. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel for further developments from tonight's Trump rally here in Austin, Texas. Thanks for joining us. Join us again tomorrow night, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for the InfoWars Nightly News.